welcome. So let's go ahead and we're going to talk today. We're going to actually start talking about um, uh, chapter three. I am not going to have a test on chapter one or chapter two today, but we will have our first test on chapter three, um, most likely on Tuesday of next week. Okay. I will be giving you the assignment um, for chapter three um, uh, today. It will be, I'm going to work on that during my preparatory hour. It will be due Monday at, at midnight. Monday at midnight, okay? So it's next Monday. So you should have plenty of time uh, to do that. If you have any questions, so once again, if you have questions, okay, uh, you've got to ask me before Monday at midnight, okay? Um, uh, or this is your, your final warning. I'm not going to you know, give you extra time or say you can ask me questions when you get to school. It's due on Monday at midnight. So if you're one of those late, late people, okay, and you like to turn it in right at like 12.01, okay, make sure, you know, you're asking somebody else because they'll probably be asleep at that point. Okay, any questions on that? I will tell you that this next test, even though I'm not testing on um, things like uh, uh, that are in chapter two, like energy, work, thermodynamics, that kind of stuff, I will have some questions about pH, okay? In particular, that one question of like how many times, remember it's gotta be in powers of, of 10, multiples of 10, right? So, um, you know, if, it, if we're going from four uh, to three, that's just 10 more times acidic, right? But if we're going four to one, that's a thousand more times. Or we could go more basic. Also, don't forget that if I'm becoming more acidic, I've got more hydrogen ions. If I'm becoming more uh, basic, I've got those hydroxy, uh, hydroxide ions or OH negatives, okay? All right. So, so now we're starting to get into the nitty gritty, I think, of um, of environmental science when we talk about ecosystem ecology. And um, all, I would say for the most part in this chapter, you'll get into stuff from bio one. So remember things like trophic levels, primary producers, primary consumers, that kind of stuff, right? Are you with me on this? Yes, predator, prey, those kinds of things, right? So, uh, so again, you will probably take a, a few more things, uh, a few more notes on this, but uh, like, don't write any of this stuff down on this. I mean, there's too many words there, okay? It, I will post this, uh, all these slides probably in the next couple days. And so you will be able to look at that. Um, but but uh, when we talk about ecosystems, we gotta talk about boundaries, okay? And so I'm gonna kill this light for a second. How many people have ever been to Yellowstone now? I've been there, okay, yeah, I remember when you went, you got me the sticker things, yeah. okay, and um, I've never been, I've always wanted to go. Um, I do have this map over here if you ever want to look at um, national parks, I found this really cool, I don't know if you have that map, yeah, but you need to go. it's a checklist, actually, so if you see me asking my bio one, you're like, why are some of these things on screen? Uh, because those are the national parks that I've been to, I've actually got a, I got a color in uh, document for you, so I added that one to my list this summer. Okay, so Yellowstone National Park, there's a lot going in uh, on there. Uh, they reintroduced wolves a few years ago, um, and that was really controversial. Some people still don't like the fact that there are wolves there. Uh, the wolf population has increased so much that they've allowed hunting in Yellowstone. Yeah, just, yeah, man, I was just gonna mention that book, man. It's, it's, it's phenomenal. Um, and I still have a copy of that. If anybody's interested, uh, once again, I'm going to refer to a lot of books in, in the class. But this is, you know, someone, uh, my buddy Bob was like, you need to read something other than like environmental science stuff. And I'm like, but I like environmental science stuff. So this is the American Wolf. This is a true uh, story of survival and obsession in the West. And um, uh, it's really, it's a quick read. It's a great read. And it's all about basically the, the, uh, the struggle between uh, hunters and ranchers and and people who um, who just plain like wolves and uh, 
Yellowstone National Park never imagined that uh, the wolves that they reintroduced would become uh, uh, almost a larger tourist attraction than the bears there. People named these wolves. They 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 felt like they knew them in some ways. Yes. Oh right, big time, big time thing. Hey, I still, I still subscribe to that Timberwolf Network too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I get like weekly updates about wolf activity in in the United States. I um, so my senior project in college was I uh, I wanted to reintroduce wolves into Indiana, <laughs> so I worked with the DNR and uh, and and talked with them about let's bring wolves back because I, I love I love it's my favorite animal like growing up I still like them a lot I have I've uh, I've seen one in real life they're they're pretty amazing and so uh, uh, nice. You see more wolves than I have. Um, so, uh, but my, uh, we couldn't do it, okay? Anybody know why we couldn't do it in uh, in Indiana? Why did it fail? Not, we're not cool enough in Indiana? Yeah, yeah nice, yeah, there's a little bit of that, I know. Yeah. Oh man, we got tons of prey. What, what, would, what would be loving, uh, what would the wolves be loving right now? Deer. Deer. There's nothing, there's nothing to, like, Okay, all right, so nothing to kill the wolf, okay? All right, okay, I could see that. That's not, yeah, that's not, that's not it, though. No. Yep, justice. Oh, there's, like, there's, like, three Bingo. We don't, and it's not about the humans, okay? It's, like, not about them eating us. It's like, wolves don't really eat people or even attack people, okay? Uh, I mean, if, if threatened, they would, but there's not, like, oh, big bad wolf, you know, it's going to, you know, eat your babies um but uh we don't have enough space uh there's not they need uh like a 60 mile radius of uninterrupted wilderness and we don't have that in indiana there's not a single spot in indiana where there's not some sort of uh, uh interruption whether that be a highway or um, or even a town yes um, so there's uh I would not be shocked if there if that's true that there are, there are because you know there's the it, there's a weird pet trade industry, you know like I just found out that uh, by McKinsey Myers the, there's zebras out there, um, uh, you know uh, we'll we'll wa either we'll watch or we'll talk about a movie called um, the Elephant in the Room is that uh, it's something like that the Elephant in the Room and it's all about um, uh, people in Dayton, Ohio, who have things like lions and tigers, and then, well, it's like Tiger King, right? Duh. You guys know this stuff. Duh. I keep forgetting. Oh, yeah, right. What a, what a train wreck. Okay. I keep telling Greta she's turned into Carol Baskin because she's got all these pets now. Yeah, you know, look out. She's going to get the get the next one. Yeah. That pup's cute. Now, look, the reason why I'm talking about all this stuff is not just the fact that this is Yellowstone, but but an ecosystem has boundaries, but those boundaries are beyond, let's say, the national park. Just because this area is Yellowstone National Park, right, this yellow stuff right here, okay, and we've got national forests around that, that doesn't say, like, the, the wolf that's living there is going to just go up to this line and say, like, okay, i got to turn around because I'm not going to be protected anymore. And this story is all about, um, uh, and they tell you this from the beginning, um, about this wolf that everyone loved and it went out of the park and a guy shot it and it died but it was all legal huh and and people lost their minds and he, it's so crazy that they would not reveal his identity and this author kind of like had to like dig through and and they met secret oh 
Oh, right. It was all like a uh, secret, but he said, I will protect this guy's, you know, identity because people want to kill that guy. Yeah. What's Cecil the Lion? <laughs> Cecil? Cecil? Yeah. I don't know Cecil the Lion. Well, one lion was all like shot five years ago. Where at? It was like in, in yeah. Africa. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. People lost it, right? Oh, yeah, exactly. That kind of stuff. But they did it legally, yeah, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, this is a legal hunt. And the guy was kind of bombed when he shot him. He said, I didn't see the collar on it. Of course, because they had a radio collar on it. But he's like, I, you know, it was in season. I shot it. And boom, that, that's what, what it is. So, so some boundaries are a little bit more, you know, confined. Like if you look inside this, the knot of this tree, this is also an ecosystem, right? But that's, that's a much smaller one, okay, than something like, like this. Okay, so this would be the park, this would be the, uh, the um, uh, national park, then we've got private land, then we've got kind of this, what we call home range or ecosystem uh, uh, boundary. Okay, now, hopefully you all know these terms, right? Producer or autotrophs, right? What do they do? They make their own food. They do that through photosynthesis. We talked about this on Friday. The opposite of, of uh, photosynthesis is cellular respiration. I had this bit in my anatomy class, and uh, and those of you who took my anatomy class, I asked this one question, and the question is, why do we eat food? And, yeah, and all of you who took my class know that it's to open doors. And I'm not talking about coming over here and physically opening this door and then closing this door, right? Okay. It's magic, okay? But the uh, it's the idea that if we want to do anything in our body, we've got to pump ions across a membrane, okay? And to get those ions across a membrane, we need this magical, wonderful little energy called blood. ATP. Who can tell me what ATP stands for? Yes, adenosine triphosphate. Okay, so I'm not talking about physically opening this door with my hand. I'm talking about using ATP to pump across the membrane. <laughs> shut it, shut it. Oh. Too hard. Okay, but using that ATP, how do I get ATP? I, I eat food. Okay, how does that happen? I break down C6H12O6. What's C6H12O6? Glucose, right? I, I break glucose down into two three carbon molecules called, you think I could get this, you'd be amazing. This is AP bio questions right here. Okay, glucose, three carbon, starts with a P. Oof. Okay, glucose breaks down, it goes from six carbon to two three carbon molecules, it starts with a P. Pyruvate, nice, yes, okay, fantastic. And that pyruvate loses a carbon, it goes from a three carbon to a two carbon, this starts with an A. The, the glucose has six carbons. It breaks down into two, three carbon molecules called pyruvate. That pyruvate loses a carbon as CO2 and it becomes something else. That two carbon starts with an A. Nice guess. Acetyl. Acetyl then is picked up by an enzyme called coenzyme A. It goes to the Krebs cycle inside that little powerhouse of the cell. Everybody knows the answer to this, right? The mitochondria, right? So that two carbon binds with four carbon, makes six carbon, that six carbon becomes five carbon, that five carbon becomes four carbon. It goes around twice, it's generating ATP, but when it does that, it's also generating hydrogen. Those hydrogens are then picked up by enzymes called NADs and FADs, okay? And those NADs and FADs take it to the electron transport chain where boom, it goes through another enzyme to make ATP, right? Okay, and it depends on who you're talking about, whether it's like 36 or 38 ATP, or where you're talking about it. But you go through glycolysis, citric acid cycle, Krebs cycle, electron transport chain, right? So it's kind of like, uh, okay, sort of in there, right? Okay, so that's us, okay? Plants, you also have mitochondria too, but they use that chloroplast to make energy, right? Inside those little thylakoids, Okay, they generate through light and dark reactions. Did you guys talk much about photosynthesis in AP Bio or just mostly cell respiration? You probably did a lot on cell rest, right? Okay, yeah. 
so photosynthesis is cool. By the way, um, I downloaded a book that was like something like $400, but I found somebody that uploaded the PDF for free, which is crazy on, um, on the, on the internets. And I'm figuring out it's a lot harder um, than I think, but I'm going to try to get us a medium. So like this special, it's crazy. It's crazy. Everything that's in this, but I want to grow some diatoms in here. I want to see if we can get some diatoms. I'm like so pumped about it. I haven't been this pumped about something. Mm -hmm. So thank you for a long time. So thanks for getting me excited about, about that stuff. We'll try to grow some. Um, there we go. There's a picture. We, that's what, that's the medium. That's the food for them. You can't just buy it. You can't, you can't be like, and I can't just mix salt water. It's like a bunch of crap in there. And it's like, they're like, this is successful. Just make it. And I was like, ugh, I'll just show you. It's like insane. It would be in a tank, but this is, yeah, 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 yeah. No. So I did a, a little short literature review using Google Scholar. And I used also used the Russian website to try to find the book, but the, uh, the Russian website didn't, um, didn't help me out. And so um, they said, oh, use this, use this book. And then this book was like $4,000 and then I found it. So it was awesome. But uh, let's go for 94. So would you go like put it under a microscope? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, that's the goal. Let's see. So let's see. This is, we should go to 494. So this is the, this is the medium, not this one. Yeah, here we go. E-S-A-W which stands for, it's like a, I forget what it even stands for. Art, it's an artificial seawater, okay? So, but look what's in it, man. So I have to like figure out how to make this, right? But everyone, all of this other, well, I, I'm trying to, and I can't find where to buy it. I typed in buy E-S-A-W medium, but everyone who's doing research on it just makes their own. So then you've got to dissolve all this stuff. I don't know, man, if I can do it. Maybe, I, maybe, I'll, get, uh, maybe I'll get lucky. And then uh, and maybe, yeah, maybe somebody has, maybe I, maybe I can find somebody that can. Are you allowed to have fish in your house? I'm going to get, I'm going to bring my fish in. Uh, they're at my house. Like they live through the summer. Remember the lettuce? Did you, do you do lettuce in here with you guys? Yeah. With the fish poop? Yeah. So my fish are still alive. From your, from your, from when you're a freshman. Really, you still have fish? Those are the same ones. They're, they're huge. No, I'm not kidding. Yeah. So you can't use like salt water to fill up the salt water. Because they, all the research that I'm finding is that you can't use that kind of salt water. That it needs something else. I don't know. Man. I'll do some more research uh, and see. Because like if it, if that's the case, like a salt water aquarium, that'd be easy to like make. But like, yeah, I don't know. I got to do some more research. If, if anybody's bored and they're like, oh, I'll see if I can find it. E-S-A-W. It's like, uh, it's an artificial salt water. All right. There's a picture of all the stuff that I just told you. Okay. Um, all right. So you guys all know these things. Consumers, heterotroph, that's the opposite of autotroph, you know, and uh, um, producer, right? Producer, consumer, autotroph, heterotroph, right? And there's lots of different kinds. Okay, these primary consumers, which are herbivores, right? So uh, there you go. Secondary consumer that feeds on uh, primary consumers. Tertiary that eats on secondary, and we call those trophic levels, right? And here we go, producers, consumers. Here's some examples. And then you see something like this, okay? I'm gonna pause this and see if we can kind of come up with our own here. Okay, so I'm gonna draw um, on the bottom. This is our primary uh, uh, producer, so a plant. And then we go here to the primary consumer. Then we go secondary consumer. And then right here at the top, we call that tertiary, which is just basically the third level. So I want to come up with ones that are, sorry, I need, I need new pins. That, that was horrible. Um, let's come up with ones of, with an Indiana base, okay? So what are, what, 
Oh, give me a second to think about it, and then we can all share together. There, maybe one person can share. Okay, so using things found in Indiana, think about a plant, a, something that eats that plant, and then so on and so forth. Okay, all right. Okay, so think about the plant, and then something that eats that plant, and something that eats the thing that eats the plant, and so on and so forth. Okay, anybody got a good example? Okay, yeah. Head of lettuce, oh, no. rabbit. rabbit, coyote, sure. What eats the coyote? <laughs> that doesn't count, but I got, yeah. What were you gonna say? You, you actually broke the mold, like, and this has only happened once before, but good job. I'll tell you why in a second. Well, I wanna see what Emma was gonna say. What were you gonna say, Emma? No, tell me. Like marijuana? Yeah. Okay. And then what eats the marijuana plant? Humans. Okay. Then what eats humans? God. God. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't work. Uh, what eats God? See, you got to go, got to go all the way up. It's tough. Here's, here's what everyone always says. I can't believe it. That no one said this because every year, okay, it's only happened once before. Okay. Most people go grass, cow, human, and then. And they're like, oh, what he's here. And that stops them. Okay. Almost every oh, year. Man. Almost every year. It's only happened once before. Okay, where someone didn't say that. Okay, so <laughs> let's let's come up with one then. Okay. Okay, the weed uh, weed and God doesn't work. Yes. <laughs> a nut, okay. And a squirrel. And a squirrel. And a dog. And a dog. I'm not laughing at you, but like I'm not laughing. I love it. Um, I could maybe I could maybe see that. Like, because you I don't. How often does a coyote eat dogs though? Does that? Um, my dog has been attacked many times. Oh man, we do have a nice population of, of coyotes. Yeah. So like, can you really like are these like those like tertiary structure or are they like they're whole separate entities? Yeah, 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 yeah. There is a, um, so yeah, they get stuff, right? So, so they could be, they could be con uh, considered like a secondary consumer because they're eating the primary consumer. But sometimes, hold on a second, I think I've got a, um, uh, on this is like a trophic. Okay. Okay. All right. Morgan. Morgan. Yeah. Yeah. Grass. Grass. Bunny. Grass. Bunny. Bunny rabbit. Yep. And then. What is the bunny? Like one of the big birds, like the eagle. Yeah. Okay. Eat the bunny. Yeah. And then what eats the eagle? Okay. <laughs> All right, Haley. What you got? I was gonna do algae. Algae. And then fish. And then fish. And then bird, and then fox. Okay, I could go with that. That'd be a good one. What do you got? Corn, corn, chicken, chicken raccoon, raccoon, coyote. coyote. Ooh, I like that. That's also very good. Ooh, these are good. Yes. Milkweed, butterfly, bird, cat. <laughs> See, that's okay. That's where. Uh, oh, oh, cat, and then you. Oh, you cats. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, I think the thing that we often forget about is the insect population. Yeah, you know, people. I'm glad you you did mention that because people often just go straight to like something big. But yeah, those insects are great. I thought I had another one. Um, I've seen this before. Uh, so thanks for thanks for asking. And, uh, um, where you've got the plants here. But then you've got the soil, and then you've got these detritivores, which are kind of those are also decomposers anyway. But I think that I think you would say that that um, that primary predator, primary consumer, would be that that. So you could say that now. I mean, it wouldn't be ending, but you've got like uh, let's say a raccoon. Uh, you could say like um, 
raccoon, uh, raccoon that's roadkill is eaten by this, but um, the raccoon, or maybe the raccoon is here and the uh, turkey vulture is here because the raccoon um, ate fish, raccoon fish, and then fish ate like plants. So plants that the fish ate that the raccoon, and then the raccoon died. That was amazing. All right. Uh, definitely know the difference between all those, and, uh, and hopefully, usually we play a game. We can't play it because uh, of COVID, but we, you may have played it with me on freshman. It's called Predator. Again, it's a card game, and it's kind of like uh, like a game like War, where you like put down a card, and this thing eats all these. Kimps. Kimps. What? Kimps. K I M P S. S. Okay. Uh -uh. Dude. Is it fun? That's good. What's it? What's it like? Exfoliating. You'll have to <laughs> exfoliating. <laughs> Does it involve like a sponge and uh, no. a bath? Okay. All right. You'll have to teach me how to play camps uh, uh, later. Nice. I yeah, I'm high right now. <laughs> on life, I'm I'm high on life, man. I am. <laughs> Was it the new guy? Did you hear me? Oh, they all laughed because you walked by. Because uh, I said I was high. <laughs> on life, though, man. On life. All right. Now look, here's this. Here's. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was glad it wasn't uh, like. Uh, Anyways, okay, so uh, okay, so remember I said you know energy can't be created or destroyed. That's that law of thermodynamics. We tend to you know lead towards entropy, so we're going to lose energy as heat. Okay, that's that second law of thermodynamics. And so in this case, every time we go up a step, so we go from here to here, we lose some heat. We go here to here, we lose some heat. We go here to here, we lose some heat. Okay. And each time we do, uh, we do that by um, uh, 10%. So if I've got 10,000, and why are all my markers sucking? 10,000 joules. Remember, we're measuring energy in joules. Okay, that was from chapter two. And you got this on the definition. So if this is 10,000, what would, what would the primary consumers be? It would be 1,000, right? And then what would be the secondary consumers? 100, right? And what would be the tertiary consumers? Ten, right? Okay, so that's that. Uh, that's that rule of ten. Okay, and ooh, wow. Uh, and so, uh, please know that that's that. This is on this trophic pyramid. I believe is on every single AP test. I don't think I've ever not seen trophic pyramids on. Uh, on the AP test, and especially this power of 10 stuff. Any questions? Are we done? No. Yeah. All right, Let, give, me, give me a couple more minutes here. All right, so when we look at this stuff, we're, we're talking about a uh, food web, okay? And, and let me show you this picture. Some people say food chains are important, but food webs are a, a little bit more complete. It's not like this one thing always eats this thing and that's it, right? There are some specialists, but for the most part, okay, we've got, you know, an interconnected web, okay? That's why when I say things like, the other day when I was talking about, you could drive a car without headlights, but you can't drive a car without an engine, right? If you take away this lion, Okay, that's going to affect the food source for other things. We call those keystone species that are more important, okay, and can affect the, um, uh, the entire ecosystem. You take away the lion, that's going to drastically change uh, the ecosystem in Africa. You take away things like the beaver here in um, Indiana, that's a keystone species. It changes the ecosystem, okay, it's food for, for things as well, and it also, uh, 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 is a consumer itself. So scavengers, of course, they consume dead animals. Detritivores, that might be a new term for you. That's an organism that specializes in breaking down dead tissues and waste products into smaller particles. Uh, we'll look at like things like fungi, fungi, fungi and bacteria 
uh, for the fungi. <laughs> uh, oh man, some of the new research on fungi is unbelievable. And uh, uh, we'll talk a little bit about that, but the symbiotic relationship between fungi and trees are just like rocking people's worlds right now. Um, and, and also farmers. Farmers are, are reconsidering um, the application of some fungicides because of um, the fact that it's changing the makeup of soil. And we'll do some soil sampling and, and look at some of that stuff later. They, and then and then decomposers, those, those uh, sorry, bacteria and fungi that I'm talking about, uh, they recycle back into that um, ecosystem. Okay, so uh, uh, in this case, I know you can't see that picture very well, but um, we've got uh, all kinds of things like this. Dung rolling beetle would be considered a detritivore. Okay, we've got things like um, the wildebeest being a primary consumer. Okay, the secondary consumer, uh, the lion. Okay, producers like plants, the acacia tree, and grasses, and so on and so forth. All right, I'm going to end with this, and if you're taking notes, I would like for you to, to, to sketch this picture, okay? And here's what I want you to do. Just draw a sun, draw a big arrow that says 99%, and then put GPP, NPP, 60%, and uh, uh, 1%, okay? So, so this is 99, this whole thing is 99, this whole thing is 1, okay? 60% here on this arrow and 40% on this arrow. Okay, and I'll kill the slide for you to do this. All right, so we've talked about uh, GPP and NPP. We're talking about gross primary productivity and net primary productivity. Don't confuse that with OPP. You know me? Yeah, OPP, anybody? Nobody knows that song? Yeah, there you go. Last year, last year, someone asked me, what does OPP stand for in that song? And uh, uh, I looked it up, and I can't tell you what it stands for, because I didn't realize it was that inappropriate. But uh, there you go. I learned it. <laughs> I'd been singing that song for years. Okay. No, 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 no. Just write 99, okay? And then put, uh, uh, I put 99 here, maybe one here, 60 here, and then 40 here. 60 here on this arrow, 40 here on this arrow. Okay, so here's the thing that's freaky. Uh, I go outside, well, inside too, but like you go outside, you I'm being bombarded with photons. That freaks me out, okay, because I can't see them. Okay, I'm also breathing in like stuff that's in the air that I can't see. You know, you're breathing in my dead stem cells right now. That's exciting, okay? But, the, but you're also being bombarded with stuff that came from the sun. Like what the heck, right? Okay, these photons are are hitting me right, okay? And some of the photons, you're like, well, what happens to those photons, okay? Some of them are absorbed into rock, okay? Into soil, okay? How do we know those photons are, are being absorbed into to rock? Well, two stuff, okay? That's energy, man, okay? Some of it, though, okay, then is reflected back up when those, when that rock cools that heat, those photons leave. Okay, we'll talk about infrared and UV light, all that stuff later. Okay, so but 99% of solar energy is reflected, okay, or passes through producers without being absorbed. That's crazy, right? That all that sunlight, you think, oh, plants are just loving it. And we just, it's so efficient. No, it's being reflected. Or it's being, you know, uh, 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 going back up into the atmosphere. Okay, 1% of that solar energy is captured by photosynthesis. So what about that? Okay, this is crazy. Only 40% of the 1% is used for photosynthesis. The rest of it is lost. 40%, that blows my mind. 40% of the 1% is lost, okay? Or sorry, is used for growth, okay? I'll stop there. It does blow my mind, I can't. I can't wrap my head around that sometimes. And photosynthesis is pretty, pretty cool. I mean, it's pretty efficient, but that's, that's not a lot. So, so that's that net primary uh, productivity. We'll talk more about that later. Maggie, did you get all that? Yeah. Okay, cool. Hey, good to see you today.
Good to see you too. All right, take it easy. Have a good day. Thank you too. Thanks for joining me every day. I really. Join me every day. I really appreciate it. All right. Bye.